Alright, I have completed some preliminary construction drawings already for this project and I hadn't mailed them to you yet. I wanted to for you to have this and maybe Carl and Carl have uh, but I wanted you to have this so you understood how I arrived at those construction drawings and if you disagree with anywhere I've gone you can uh, let me know and we can adjust things. But these are the things that I encountered and what drove the final design uh, from my standpoint. As I understand it, the idea was to raise this patio up to this floor level, to the zero floor level, basement floor level, and raise the deck up to this level. The deck was to be about 16 by 20, is my recollection. And I wasn't quite sure if the patio was to match, but we'll get to that in a minute. I had a few things wrong here. I think this is the pretty close to exactly what is happening there at the moment. And so right off, I want to try to pick up a little bit more margin on this side here, as well as that side. I didn't like this interface uh, for the extra foot or so that it was going to take to accomplish something like this. So because we needed the stairs regardless, I kind of wanted those centered on this window, something like this. And this is where I began. It ends up taking more space than that to actually uh, accomplish it all. I had endeavored just on the left side here, how far over could I move that railing and not crowd that window too much and came up with about there on that left side. And I had run some preliminary numbers so I knew that this was probably going to be a two span beam back at the wall. So I knew there were going to be three columns back there at the wall because we can't attach to the house any longer. They do have special hardware now that Simpson is making. I did not investigate that but actually will uh, prior to making this a final thing because if we can eliminate that whole beam system back there we would be and you would be well served. Offhand though when I was working with these three columns I was trying to get some sort of relationship with these doors and have this stair kind of still set up in front of this window here and I had looked at a drop beam at first but because when you run the joists over the top of this beam here and the joists running back to the house I wasn't sure how you get closure at that brick end save mounting I guess you could mount if you wanted a drop beam yes you could mount you could mount a piece of lumber to the wall to that brick wall that would be allowed because it wouldn't be holding anything uh, just for that last little piece of your deck board which runs this way so if you wanted a drop beam you could have it I have designed this with a flush beam with the beam pushed up to so that it's not hovering over this door down there like this and then secondly I believe that I found out that it was going to take two by tens uh, to make this uh, one clear span, two by ten joists. And here you're looking at the two by ten joists and the deflection, the springiness is about a half an inch uh, in the center. And if you went to two by twelves, if you wanted to, if that springiness, if, and it's not going to be springy, springy, but it's just going to have more deflection than two by twelves. I've designed it with two by tens because uh, they have passed good in these other categories and so we have this situation back at the brick wall and at the other end of, we could have had this but I didn't want those columns back onto your concrete under there uh, particularly since we're using two by tens this is what I looked at doing a drop beam out at the north side at the far side I'm calling that the north it's close to west but I'm calling it north uh, so I but to do this we were going to have columns back in the patio so if we're getting the two by tens anyway I made a clear span and pushed this beam B the left hand beam out this way and I can't remember why exactly I made that a flush beam as well so probably in an endeavor just to keep this open underneath so the situation I've designed and as reflected in the construction drawings right now is identical to what's shown here. Uh, in designing the beams themselves then, beams A and B at the south and the north, 
uh, those had to be at least 2x10s anyway because the members were 2x10s and the joists were 2x10s and you can see that these pass very handily to 2x10s. Now here are the loads on these footings down here at the columns So, I, because I want to talk a little bit about that and this is the north beam then out at the margin a similar thing and its loads similar obviously keeping in mind some of this film is for the builders information as well but coming down to the lower level underneath the deck and where these columns are one two three and one two three out here with beam a and beam b what i found out in the having these square ones with concrete this is a recipe for uh, cracking unless you're going to run control joints in these margins here and I talked to my concrete person and really this is the better way to do these even though it's more complicated it's the better way to do these when you're going to have concrete running up to these piers these piers come all the way up to the surface of your patio down here and they recommend that these be rotated this way so that you can create control joints and you don't have as much hazard of cracking. So this is how I've designed it now with these turned like this. These are piers that come all the way up to the level of your patio here so that we keep those columns up above grade. And whether that's the end of your patio there, I don't know. This, whether this 16 foot is the end of your slab here or that is pushed further east which is what I'm showing here pushed over where there's some open patio underneath that window here this nets you about a 21 foot slab under there by 16 because the other edge has to come out with the points of these piers here or pedestals uh, so if that's not the general idea on that lower patio let me know and we'll make some adjustments these orange numbers are the loads on those columns these ones out here are nothing, relatively nothing. These ones are the, the ones we have to be more concerned about. The ones out here, on this 3890, I show this as a footing down there and then a pedestal coming up. All of these other ones here, this one the same way. But these other ones here, these four, these are just pedestals that don't have their own footing. They're their own pedestal that just goes down 32 inches below grade. And comes up those have to be though 14 inches square in order to get your coverage around these uh, base connectors the Simpson base connectors and so this is what you would have with control joints from the point of that to the point of that and then your slab edges unless this one comes out further now there is some concern back here because I'm not sure how deep that existing, how our footings are going to come down, footings or pedestals are going to come down and get enough area uh, to carry these loads. I'm not worried really about these ones at the end. We do have to move them two inches away from the wall in the first place. Those won't be right against the wall. So they have to be out two inches for the hardware concrete coverage clearance and on these on this big one in the middle that's carrying 4,000 pounds I have you digging all the way down to whatever this footing goes down to and then putting a new footing attached to that uh, with rebar and then coming up with that pedestal these two others here and here I'm assuming that those are just dug straight down and part of them is sitting on the edge of the existing footing with the rest extending in front of it into 32 inches below grade you can see this one is larger out here it actually doesn't need I'm showing the whole 24 by 24 footing here that can be the same size as these at the surface level when you can form that up smaller at the surface level okay and, and since I already feel remiss for not investigating this in the first place I have returned to look at this uh, BVLZ brick veneer ledger connector to see what might be done. I saw when I just did the search that apparently each little kit is only $36. So 
this begins to look like a, a viable thing and I'll look at a little bit more and let you know on that and I have to admit I feel kind of silly at the moment because I really should have investigated this uh, new Simpson system to attach a brick veneer a ledger to this wall I already now know that it's almost certainly the way to go everything works in our favor with regard to it so probably you will be able to ignore all of these columns and all of that work back there in favor of this new system that they've come up with to get around this code requirement I was not able to advance on it through this film and I didn't want to waste too much time with it but I could tell just from the first several minutes uh, that it was going to be the way uh, to best address this project and as soon as you take a look at these first few minutes you'll probably feel the same way we're particularly helped by the fact that we are raising this up so we definitely have a full ledger already inside the house all along that wall uh, to which we can attach our new ledger so those will all go away down under there and instead of that big double beam you'll just have a single 2 by 10 ledger back here and here is that film you can search it up easily enough here or just key it in here and watch the whole thing but here is the first several minutes for you to get an idea of how simple it looks to me anyway the BVLZ brick veneer ledger connector system from Simpson Strongtie is a code listed solution for attaching ledgers to wood framed houses with brick veneer ideal for rebuilds retrofits and new projects this cost effective system allows for installation without demolition or replacement of existing brick veneer the BVLZ eliminates the need for posts near the house by transferring load to the structure creating a clean, less obstructed view. This system is load rated, with spacing tables engineered to meet prescriptive IRC joist span ratings. And I should have probably curbed my enthusiasm and I spoke too soon, uh, because when I did some further research, this was the ideal situation where that's all we had to do, is uh, fasten these things every so often, every 12 or however many, inches on center right through the brick and into your existing band joist however when I investigate this further and start looking at their requirements to do it that simple way you're limited to a joist span of 12 feet uh, where you could have just done it that simple way here but when we get up to a 16 foot span down through here they require them probably every 14 or 12 inches but they also would require us to open up the inside ceiling and do some pretty substantial interior work here which the Carls can investigate this and see if they prefer to do it that way but it undoubtedly would require opening that ceiling inside so for the moment I'm going to act as if no error has been done and leave things as they are and now we'll return to the regular scheduled program. You know that system's probably great if your span is less than 12 feet, but otherwise you know, we're going to have to have this situation here. I did look at trying to do that in a clear span, just having uh, the two columns out here and possibly the two columns back there, uh, but this was going to take either or 2x14s and I don't know if people even sell 2x14s uh, and alternatively especially for the exterior in terms of an engineered product uh, you could get by with a five and a quarter by 11 and 7 eighths this thing here which is this is called moist use the wet use which is probably a better bet it would take a three and a half by 14 so if you did want that clear span, uh, that's what it would take, and we can do it. Those corner footings would be enlarged. So if that much is important to you, 
having that like that down there back here it's not so critical but if you want this completely open out here then yes we can specify uh, probably this piece here if that can be had uh, locally and then you end up with two big footings on each end leaving that alone now and moving to the stair construction which was kind of a critical piece of this uh, puzzle so first when I divided the risers from here down to here into 13 risers and have you come straight this all flows over here on one level and then come down the stairs I had difficulty getting your clearance under here I was at 6.6 and we need to have 6.8 when you come under here to meet code requirements and I could not do that putting this patio level with here and by the way in my drawings and my plans and my riser heights and all that I show this up level with the top of your foundation and then sloped this way at 3 16 of an inch per foot but this was not giving us the clearance under here this 13 risers was not giving us that clearance under there coming straight off of there to get to that 6 8 then I ended up dropping that down and this gives you a nicer rise run relationship it reduces that angle by about six degrees but it does require that that be dropped when it comes over there something like that and you can see that that stair be, does become less steep obviously going to 14 risers but the important thing is it gets us our 6.8 here and it is just 6.8 which impacts our discussion about a kind of drip pan underneath here or some sort of thing to keep some of the water at least out from under here this column I ended up not showing in the plans and I investigated these railings and it looked to me like you were looking for this one here not the drink rail but the contemporary rail so that's what I've designed with and that is about six inches wide so that drove some of the uh, stair width considerations it looked to me like there that was how it was done it just they end it I don't know if you paint these up once they're cut but this was kind of the what I could find on how that works and for, for what it's worth none of these these are from the people that actually make the cable which is Finney or Feeney cable and none of their now this was from Timber Tech and they show these bottom rails and these intermediate uh, newel posts which but the Feeney people they don't show that anywhere so presumably it's not required but from Timber Tech which is what is specified it's shown and required so that's what I'm showing as well in this uh, first interpretation that was a funky detail where it was dying into the riser of this steps so that changed it requires its own little null post down there at the separation and probably one at that end too that looks a little goofy as well so we'll put one there as well then they're going to require some sort of guard here to keep people from falling over and I you could save some space by just putting vertical two by two or something like that to wall that off but I'm assuming that you wanted something a little more uh, finished so I've moved this over to accommodate the extra rail on the inside there the same timber tech construction coming down which required an extra six inches uh, of space and by the time I was all said and done we just just have the three foot and it's not required these stairs can be even more narrow but now even though our stair is close to four feet wide or four foot three wide we still end up with three foot zero between these projections of the rails on the inside that top contemporary rail and then I horsed around with getting this thing to center up on that window costing us a little room at the deck and underneath but there, you can see that we're just at six eight and I have no reason to suspect that that's going to change much as my dimensions are pretty good from here to there 
I realize this film is getting long. It's already at 20 minutes, and I'm trying to move things along. The other thing you're, that's going to be required at that stairway, regardless, is some sort of handrail. I don't think they're going to allow this to be your handrail because it's just got too large of a profile. So this would require an additional, whether that's just that uh, pipe rail. They actually sell an ADA type pipe rail that's probably easy to mount to their system. But that is the only part that would be required. They don't need one for this little riser and you don't need one beyond here. But something on one side or the other is required. So I'm showing that in the drawings. So that I don't forget, you also do not need one anywhere, you don't need any railings anywhere on that landing if you don't want them. But it is going to be about 20 inches high at that corner, I would think. So if you don't want any railings at all, I cannot show them there. Now the next section I want to look at is this stair down here and how it interfaced. I wasn't particularly keen on this where it's finished flushed with the column. These columns finish flush with this beam up here because I have the beam let in to the front face of this. But down here I just felt that's going to look a little funky down the road. Talk, thought about bringing it out like that and that and I think this is what I ended up with because see how it hangs over the edge of the slab and the slab pretty much should end at the point of that pier. So I ended up just uh, pushing it back like that. Uh, ignore this ceiling covering I'm showing. We'll talk about that in a minute. But I wanted to look at perhaps you wanted to just wrap this stair around all three sides of this. Except it looked to me like the land was going to be so uneven that you know we're two stairs to the right to the patio here, but it would take almost three out here. So I abandoned that. Uh, whole endeavor or whole look. And this little section here is more or less for the builder. And it was a case of how we were going to support this ledger here, or this band joist that carries these uh, floor joists here. And it didn't matter which way we ran them, we were run into the same uh, situation regardless. And this is what I came up with as a solution. This, this is not really a joist, it's the end cap joist or the end band joist. So I have you notching the bottom of that and carrying this past it uh, and using some sort of a, a concealed Simpson hanger at this connection here. That is the only really complex part of this framing is right there. Because I didn't want to add a whole other column uh, to accomplish that. And then this is that same, there's a column here and a column here, 4x4s, four four and then I have a 2x10 mounted below that band joist, and that's what these stringers hang from with a Simpson connector right here. So based on the things that I've told you so far, this is where I am now with these construction drawings and what uh, I've put together at this point. This is the lower level, and this is the upper level. And before we talk about the under deck area covering this ceiling under here to stop some of the water from coming down, these were kind of the finished photos at this point. Of that structure. Getting to the under deck, though, there were there are a variety of ways to go, and I looked at several of these. This was the original under deck. That looked pretty complicated to me to put together. This was a, a similar situation. And none of these are are sold as you know almost dry or well. They're all sold as uh, created dry space entirely. Of the ones that I reviewed and got familiar with, this zip-up seemed to be the most simple uh, installation. I think they were one of the originals. And this guy says it's the best. And just its installation is so simple, the parts they sell and you just put it together. Compared to this uh, under deck, which was really involved, and, and so is the rain-tight system. 
I'm familiar with from an, uh, Trex, I think, makes it. It's very involved as well. For simplicity in a prefab system, this is the way to go. The zip up. However, all of these systems require a drop here to get the water to run out and down. A slight drop, the zip up, or one of them required about an inch and three quarter drop. And as you know, we were already limited to 6 8 here, and there was no way to really change that uh, beyond you know dropping this deck some here leaving this one high and dropping this one so what I'm showing here is something that would happen after because you're not going to be able to get your final inspection if this is less than 6 8 here even though you could probably easily live with 6 6 you guys are both kind of tall so maybe it's a consideration in any event I've modeled something this is just corrugated galvanized panels that there are some burring strips put across here and those are strung up there and fastened up through their corrugations uh, that would provide you some dry space I don't think it's going to be rain tight if you want to use one of these rain tight systems my recommendation is get the final inspection uh, and then do it and accomplish it and you'll end up with about 6.6 six at least here probably six six and a half uh, the very last word on that that six eight clearance and the ceiling etc is that if you wanted to you could pull back where you step down here this could be pulled back to about here where you come down and then immediately uh, step down and, and that new post would be back and this landing would come back further and then you would have your six eight but it would be a little not as smooth looking as this. So that would be the balance there in terms of getting that 6-8 clearance if you really wanted that whole 6-8 with the ceiling on and everything. If you pull that back to there and you step down and then this stair ends up fronting out about here. So that is the final word and I believe that's the final word in the film as well. If you have any questions feel free to telephone or call or whatever or email and let me know where we are if we have to change things. If I've missed anything entirely, I apologize and just let me know. Thanks.